Hey guys, thanks for joining me. We are at Homebrew Supply, Woodby Island. We're picking up some uh, some ingredients before we make that jalapeno honey, honey, not a stout, a honey porter. Jalapeno honey porter, so that should be interesting. I just got done playing some disc golf and I really pissed myself off. Lost both my discs that I brought and yeah, there's that. Little starter kits, everything you need to brew. Got some 1056 Y yeast. It says White Labs, but I don't see any White Labs in here. Oh wait, yeah, there is from down here. Isn't that White Labs in the Pure Pitch? Uh, uh, I don't see any White Labs. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. Shop looks great, Terry. Yeah. Where are we exactly? This is a uh, Wicked Tootin Brewing Company and Whidbey Island Homebrew Supplies. Very so cool. Got Very homebrew cool. Supplies. You can taste it before you take it home. All that jazz. Awesome. Bond, not a ten. It's real oh, the, close. Hey. Tent, the crystal ten. I'll yep. take it. It'll yeah. work. And then I got lots of chocolate. I'll take that. <laughs> and a lot of beer too. Uh, yeah, I got a soda fridge and then the beer fridge to the right. Nice. And then do you have uh, some get wicked? Uh, Nice little tasting place too. Wow. Do you play instruments? Because I guess you can just come and pick one up. Look at that. What do we got here? Look at this. Recipe kits. We started out with a 10 gallon system because we thought we were just going to make samples for people to try and the beer got so popular that we were brewing every day, still could not keep up. So we bought the one barrel system and it's going to be quick before that's not enough. So we're thinking about going into the big brewing business, oh, wow. not not just samples anymore. So Can go national? It's, oh yeah, that's what we're going to Very yeah, cool. Very definitely cool. changing our model. <laughs> This is where dreams are made. <laughs> Man, Terry's been really cool. I mean, we just came to check out the shop and get some ingredients, but he's just talking a lot. Just like normal, I mean, you've, if you're into beer, you know, you just kind of go on and on about it. It's something you love to do, you know? Bunch of grains, God, look at all these, man. Pale Skagit. Take a look, why don't we? Uh oh. <laughs> Running a little low, Terry. Jalapeno, honey. Oh, wow. Yeah, dark, heavy. You gotta bring sweet. in a sample when it's done. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Terry, Absolutely. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming in. Wish us luck on this good beer. Seeing you. Yeah, definitely. Have fun making the beer. Cheers. Cool. Thanks so all much. Right. Have a good day, all right? All right guys, we took a little quick stop from getting beer ingredients and just wanted to come check out Deception Pass. So I'm gonna put the drone up in the air and you guys gotta check this thing out, cause this is crazy. Thanks for joining me. We are on the tour day would be, and today's gonna be a little something different. I've had a couple fishing videos that I'm, I haven't actually edited them, but that's what's gonna be put out first. And in the middle of them, we're gonna be doing a home brew. My dad got into home brewing a couple years ago. Uh, I got into it first, and then he hopped on it. But he went further, and now he's doing a full grain system. And what that means is, you take the malts, special malts and you put hot water in them basically and let it sit so you can get the sugars out of them. Those sugars then convert into alcohol. 
after you pitch the yeast into the wort and that's how you make beer and there's more to it obviously I'm gonna show you but today we're gonna be making a jalapeno honey stout I'm not really a stout drinker uh, I'm more of an IPA guy but let's just take the opportunity to see what happens here my parents happen to have a little barn on their property so this is where either my dad does his home brews or my mom shows her artwork sometimes people come in and it's set up nice when she has her art in here but right now we're just bare bones we're turning into a brewery it's a nice thing about having a barn you change it to whatever you need to do with it all my recycle stuff this is where we're going to be brewing guys, check it out, this is the setup, and bam, look at that, there it is, that's the mash tun, that's the boil kettle, boil kettle, Bayou Classic, this is a simple little uh, burner you can actually get off Amazon, I got mine off of Amazon at least, and then we've got the chiller, Woo! talking about cleanliness and keeping everything sanitized. We've got our sanitized bucket here. We've filled up a spray bottle full of sanitizer that we'll be spraying this area down. But right now we're just taking some bleach wipes. You all know what bleach wipes are. Wiping the whole thing down and spraying it so it's sanitized. Okay, just so you know what a mash tun looks like. Mm -hmm. There it is. It's just a big thermos with a uh, false bottom. So what'll happen is grain in there it'll hold this down right and then as the sugars and whatnot are extracted they'll go down this tube cool okay so sugar factory sugar factory essentially <laughs> all right what we're doing now is going to add some hot water um it's not up to temp yet but we're going to add it to the mash tun to warm it up before we put the grains in that way it's all hot so we hold that temperature for longer just a more precise temperature you need it to be at this certain temperature for about an hour while it extracts all the sugars. And this is this is eight pounds of Copeland Pilsner. It's two pounds of uh, or four pounds, I forget which, of chocolate 350. And then <laughs> sorry, <laughs> a little caramel 15. That's all in there. If you want to just cut it open wide just, just to get the water oh, okay. That'll work. Spilled a little bit, but that'll work. Some water. It's a lot faster than what I was doing. Now I just add this hot water that we brought to temp, about 170, into the mash tun. she goes and the smell you can't get the smell on camera unfortunately the smell is just like your best oatmeal kind of bread smell that you know first thing in the morning just uh. <laughs> now how much how many jalapenos are we using here I'm using five just um, five big ones, huh? Yeah, I'm making a five gallon batch and I talked to some people about their additions of jalapeno in the past. They said one gallon per, um, or one jalapeno per gallon. Got it. And I'm intentionally not putting the seeds in there. Yeah, those are just too hot, huh? Yeah, yeah, I don't want the heat, I just want the flavor. <laughs> Jalapenos and honey. That's a chunky one. It was from a different farm. 
Kinda weird. The pint of water? Yeah, I figured that'd be enough. Put all that put all that good stuff together and look at that. Ah, the sun finally came out. Beautiful. Look at this place. Quite lovely. And we just turned their wort back on, boil. We're, we're measuring the sugars right now. Just tell us how much sugar we extracted. Ingredients. What do we have here? So I'm doing the grain. I'm going to extract the sugar from that. Then I have just one pound of sugar, uh, corn sugar. Why do we need more sugar? Because I want a high ABV beer. Oh, what's ABV? Alcohol by volume. Cool. So what are we shooting for? 8.7. Woo! An imperial stout. Imperial stout. Then I've got my hops, my Whirlflock tablet, pellets. my Hop, yeast. Hop pellets. And what's, all that stuff's going in there. What's directly. the Whirlflock tablet for? Makes your beer clear. Helps make it Makes the beer clear. That's, that's the important thing. And we will be using Y yeast? Yes. Smack pack. Smack pack, but it's a... Uh, it's either already smacked or uh, the yeast are just going crazy. Because <laughs> it's a little expanded. Yeah, it's expanded. I'm letting it warm up. 1057 was our extracted sugar level. So that's how much sugar we got from the malts. Now we've turned the boil back on. We're going to add some bittering hops and we're also going to add more sugar. So we can get the OG up to where we need it, so we can have that eight percent. Smells like a good stout. It does. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. And we're not gonna add too many hops. We're just going for an ounce of Simcoe, which to me smelled dank. I like that smell. And then we have a ounce of Golding, and I haven't really heard of that. It smells like pickles. <laughs> what's what's the golding supposed to be? It's a nice flavoring hop, a mellow. These are both kind of like uh, uh, European mm -hmm. style hops. Actually, the Simcoe's is a, a Yakima Valley, uh, Idaho, Washington hop that's been made. It's great for IPA. It's a great bittering hop. Um, but you're just going to use a little bit less than you would for an IPA. Oh yeah, for an IPA, you'd be less. using a, twice as much. Maybe yeah. even four ounces. Yeah, yeah. This is, and then the uh, the golding's just gonna add a nice little mellow flavor to it. It's not a pickle flavor. Yeah, yeah. Just kidding. Well, what's it's it should go well with the jalapeno and the honey. Right. That's what gotcha. they'll all balance out. We're getting a nice little hot break there. Here it comes. Okay. It's gonna oh, look overflow. At look at that. It's gonna overflow. You're not worried? Well, it could very well overflow. Oh gosh. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go reach over here. Turn down? Yeah, that's too far though. You just oh no, you're fine. You're good. Okay. Perfect. Woo! Perfect. Saved the day. Oh, why the sun go away? Come on. You turned it down. I turned it down. <laughs> now a little bit of that Simcoe. Alright. Whoa, 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 whoa. Keep it down, keep it down, keep it down. Look at that, that's a nice break. Oh my God. Turn the flame up <laughs> just a little bit so it doesn't die. There you go, that's good. Just sugars, corn sugar. Corn we're, sugar. We're gonna bring up the OG. Getting that, getting that corn sugar so we can get OG on it. Get some real OG <laughs> in there, man. Original Gangsters? Uh, No, Original Gravity actually, but you okay. know. <laughs> I'll go with that. As you guys just saw, it was boiling. A little bit too much, so just turned it down a tad, got it right to the uh, surface, right to the edge, I should say. And uh, now we're adding a few things. Timer's been set for an hour. Yes. We've added one ounce of Simcoe, and now that was one. Well, what I'm adding essentially is one pound of corn sugar. Pound. So that was the that half was pound, and this is like a half pound. And this is another 12 ounces I had oh, okay. an earlier brew. We have sugar already from the malts that we extracted and then also we're adding our own sugar so we can get a lot of yeast food we should say yes these sugars are essentially 
food for yeast. And when the yeast eat them, they will convert the sugars into alcohol. Exactly. By peeing and farting. Well, the alcohol <laughs> comes from the peeing. The farting makes the carbon dioxide together. It all makes beer. Did you know that? Do you it. like beer? Did you know that the alcohol is actually yeast piss? Essentially. All right, here we go with the uh, Golding hops. Into the drink. And just to clear up your beer a little bit, we'll flock. Boom. Ready? Yeah, go ahead, pour it in there, and I will keep stirring. There she is, boys. It's gonna be subtle, man. Yeah. It's gonna be very subtle. I want it to be subtle. I don't want it to be overwhelming, but. Right. It's gonna be good. It's in there. Even though I don't like stouts, I bet this won't be too bad. <laughs> it's always better when you brew it, you know? <laughs> All right, so we're pretty much done. We've added our final hops and warflock. We let it boil out. What was the last thing we added to it? Oh, the jalapenos and the honey. Let so, that boil out until it got a protein break. Yeah, it got a little protein break, meaning it was foaming like crazy, and then it just kind of settled down. And then we shut it down. Now we're cooling it off. We got the uh, cool cooling coils in there, and... Um, and I'm just stirring it up just to get it all... Pretty much it, all it is. You got to get it to temperature, and then we'll pitch the yeast in there after we put it in the uh, fermenter. The first stage fermenter. My dad will then transfer it. I'll be in San Diego, but he'll transfer the beer from one fermenter to the other so he can kind of remove some of the trube that's left at the bottom. It's just a bunch of bunch of stuff, ingredients basically, that all goes to the very bottom and then separate all that from the beer in a different fermenter, let it sit for like six weeks, and then bam, you're good. Right now, the uh, warp or the beer Pretty much, we just lowered from 200 degrees to 70 degrees, right. so we can add the yeast. Right. Yeast can't take high temperatures; they won't. They right. won't like that. You could kill them. So now it's exposed, though, is what, what I'm wondering. Right, so, but not for very long. And I'm about to put a billion yeast in there. So it's like the yeast are gonna take care of business. If any right. little thing, a little hair, or little other yeast cell flying around in the air lands in there right now, it's all right because we're gonna jack we're gonna up. Overwhelm this with. <laughs> The yeast as, that we want as many as you can get in there and then hopefully hopefully it'll start going and then i can get some video of the blow off tube just blowing off as the yeast create a bunch of co2 from the activity so that's it there's the beer and here comes the yeast well here put the whole thing in there and pop pack nutrient pack didn't pop that's okay we'll pop it and then uh It'll leave, and we'll leave oh, it Oh, it was, parsley popped. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, then. we're good to go then. Smells like beer. Mm-hmm. Ready? Yeah. Woo, gasoline. <laughs> Black oil beer. Jeez. Now find a cool, dark spot, and we're setting our blow off tube here. When all the, uh, CO2 blows off, we should see some cool bubbling going on. 65 there. degrees here right now. Cool. Since it went in here warm and the yeast is in here warm, I'm going to let it uh, settle out. Check it later on this evening, see what the temperature is here. I have these boards because they don't conduct heat very well, so it's not making it real cold on the bottom. And I have a heater in case I need to raise the temperature a little bit. Cool. Pretty simple. Yeah. So, all right, guys, I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you liked it. It's a little different uh, than some of my other videos, but I've got some brewing equipment myself to homebrew, so maybe I can get into it and leave some comments below and anything we did wrong or if you want to see some more brews. So, have a good day. Peace.